Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the June 2025 Life Science Biology Regents exam. In this video we're going to be focusing on cluster number 7 which covers questions 33 to 37. We're going to go ahead and start off with number 37 which refers to this diagram up here. It says, or it's titled, Does It Matter? And it says that the carbon used by plants is moved between living organisms, the minerals in the soil, the hydrosphere, and the atmosphere through processes involving the carbon cycle. And here we have the diagram. It shows that sunlight enters the cell in process A, um, and then something leaves it. Okay, and, and as a result of process A, 123 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter are absorbed in this tree. Okay, then we have process B, which is occurring not in the tree, but now in the cow. It's now releasing carbon compounds. Um, and we know that this tree is also emitting 60 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter. So um, the takeaway here is that this tree is absorbing more uh, matter than it is releasing, right? So that's how this cycle occurs, right? The, the cows are obviously releasing carbon compounds, but then the trees are absorbing carbon compounds and moving them into uh, the soil. Right, and finally we have process C, which is this bacteria taking dead organisms and fertilizer products uh, and emitting uh, 60 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter into the soil, okay, which is then um, cycled back into the atmosphere through both the cow and the trees, okay? So number 33 says, using the information from the model, which statement correctly identifies how the movement of matter in this ecosystem provides energy for different organisms? Okay, so it says that, or choice number one says that the plant takes in carbon compounds from the atmosphere. Is this true? Well, how do plants make their energy? Well, they make it through photosynthesis, which takes carbon dioxide plus H2O, and then turn with the power of sunlight, of course, turns that into uh, glucose or any form of sugar, which they use for energy, plus oxygen, okay? So that's what's causing this mass to become absorbed, okay? So this first part of this choice is correct, right? The plant takes in carbon compounds from the atmosphere, which is CO2. Then those carbon compounds get converted into sugar and then used by the cow during process B to produce usable energy, right? Now, what is process B? Well, anytime you see this um, circle with a bunch of squiggly lines inside of it, you should know that that is a mitochondria. You're looking at the inner membrane of the mitochondria. What happens in mitochondria? Well, cellular respiration occurs, which is uh, oxygen plus uh, glucose being turned into CO2 plus H2O plus ATP. And guess what? This cow is going to eat the leaves that fall off of this tree, or they're going to eat the grass that is, again, uh, undergoing process A. But I guess in the context of the problem, it's eating the, the sugar that's stored inside of the leaves of this tree, okay? So that's why choice uh, one is correct, right? The plants are taking in the CO2 from the atmosphere. They're in photosynthesis, they're using it to produce sugar. And then the cow is then eating the plants. Why is it eating the plants? Because they contain sugar. And because that cow will then undergo uh, cellular respiration, it will eat that sugar and breathe in oxygen and then release that carbon back into the atmosphere in the form of CO2. Um, and its benefit is that it gains ATP, which is the energy molecule, okay, that it uses to power all of its functions, all of its cellular functions, okay? So number two, or choice two, says that the plant takes in oxygen from the soil, which gets converted into nutrients during process B. All right, the nutrient is sugar. Sugar is only produced during photosynthesis, which is process A. Uh, the cow performs process C. Nope, the cow is not a bacteria. Cows are not decomposers, they're herbivores. And choice four, the cow's waste are broken down through process A. That's false. The cow's waste um, is broken down through process C. Process A occurs inside of the tree. How is the cow you know, excreting its waste onto the tree, the cow excretes its waste onto the ground where it meets with the bacteria to get decomposed, okay? So choice one is the only one that really makes sense here. 34 says, using evidence from the model, construct an explanation for the process or for the role of process C in cycling matter between living organisms in the ecosystem. Well, why does process C have to occur? Well, it adds nutrients to the soil and those nutrients are then absorbed by the tree to create energy for this cow. So as the cow excretes waste or as the cow dies, process C will break down <clears throat> that dead matter or that dead organisms 
uh, to then add nutrients back into the soil. So we can say that um, process C or process C converts dead matter into nutrients used by trees in process A. Okay, we could also see that we can also say that process C makes nutrients available to plants when organisms die. Uh, you could say when organisms die, bacteria uses the matter to carry out life processes. You could say that process C releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as dead organisms and fertilizer products are broken down. Other, in other words, as long as you say, as you say that uh, process C is taking some sort of source of carbon and then recycling it back into um, either the cow or the atmosphere or something that the trees can use, you would have gotten full credit here. Okay, so all three of those work. Um, I guess another answer you could have put here was that process C uh, takes all of the carbon from dead animals and then releases it back into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide or uh, in the form of nutrients that are then used by the trees to power process A to feed the cows in process B. Okay, so the 35 relies on this diagram here. It says that plants rearrange matter to produce other needed com compounds. The model below shows some of the compounds that plants synthesize. Boxes X, Y, and Z represents elements to make new compounds. Um, and it's asking us which explanation best supports the claim that elements from substance one in the model combine with different elements to form other carbon-based molecules, okay? So anything that's a circle is gonna be a substance. Anything in a box is an element. So box X is an element, or elements, many. All right, box Y is an element, box Z is an element. They're producing DNA, proteins, lipids, and starches, okay? <clears throat> so guess what? These are compounds, right? The, they're macromolecules. DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid, or nucleic acids are a type of ma macromolecule. Uh, proteins are a type of macromolecule. Lipids are a type of macro macromolecule. Starches are a type of macromolecule, okay? And they all revolve around some source of carbon, okay? So DNA is made up of a sugar, plus a phosphate, uh, plus a nitrogenous base. Right, box Z, or sorry, proteins are made of nitrogen that's bound to some sort or some source of um, carbon. Right, lipids are some sort of uh, fatty acid uh, attached to another source of carbon. And starch is just a long, long, long chains of sugars that are linked to one another. So if substance one gives rise to starch, that means that substance one has to be a sugar, right? Because the only way that you can make starches is just by combining and chaining a bunch of sugars together, okay? So then what that means is box Y has to be carbon, right? Because sugar is made of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. Um, and if you combine those carbons, those hydrogens, and those oxygens with um, let's say box X, which is a phosphate and a nitrogen, then you get DNA because you get a sugar, which is what substance one was, plus a phosphate and a nitrogen, you get DNA, right? You get this structure um, over here. There's your nitrogenous base. Here's your phosphate group. Here's your, uh, yeah, here's your oxygen, okay? Um, same thing goes with box Z, right? If you take carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and you slap on a nitrogen group onto it, you'll get a protein, okay? So 31 or 35 asks, which explanation best supports the claim that the element from substance one in the model combines with different elements to form other carbon-based molecules, okay? Number one, the elements in box Y are broken down into nitrogen and phosphorus and then combined to form lipids. Guess what? Lipids don't contain nitrogen. That's false. Lipids contain long chains of fatty acids, um, and hydrocarbons. So they only contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Number two says substance one molecules can be joined together to make starch. Guess what? Starch is a type of sugar, right? Technically. Um, and it's not a unique molecule, right? If you combine substance one, which is a sugar, with another sugar, with another sugar, and you form this long chain, you will get a starch. You won't get another carbon-based molecule, right? You won't get a molecule uh, a DNA molecule or a protein molecule, you'll just get another long chain of sugars, in this case, starch. So the reason why 
that choice is not the correct answer is because it's not forming a new carbon, a new type of carbon-based molecule. And those new types are lipids, proteins, DNAs. Um, those are the other types that we can turn the sugar into. Okay. Number three, the elements in box Y are combined with nitrogen to make substances which are used to form proteins. And that's correct, right? The box in Y or is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if you combine them with nitrogen, you will form a protein. If you combine them with nitrogen and then with um, phosphate, you'll get a DNA. If you combine them, uh, well, if you that's it. You don't need to combine it with anything else to get a lipid because that's just what lipids are made of. So number four is wrong because substance one molecules can join together to make DNA. No, if substance one molecules, which is a sugar, combine together, they'll make a starch. The diagram made that very clear here. Okay, so that's just a way that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen can be arranged or combined with uh, nitrogen and phosphorus <clears throat> to uh, then turn into different types of macromolecules that we study in class. All right, so number 36 says, based on the information and all the models provided, which claim can be made about why substance one is essential for plant metabolism, okay? So what is substance one again? It is that sugar. So number one says, process B combines substance one with other elements to form lipids utilized by the plant, right? Does this sound right? Does process B, cellular respiration, have to do anything with making lipids? No, it doesn't, right? You're combining oxygen with glucose, uh, and that turns into carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and ATP, uh, or sorry, um, water and ATP. So process B has nothing to do with lipids. Sure, it can use a lipid, um, and it can get the energy from a lipid as well, but no one is combining sugar to make a lipid in process B. If anything, this is being broken down to make ATP, okay? So choice one's out. Uh, choice two, process A rearranges elements of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to form substance one to be utilized by the plant. And this is going to be the correct answer here, right? Remember that uh, process A is going to be, this is in a chloroplast, and this turns, uh, you know, carbon dioxide and H2O and sunlight into glucose or sugar. This is how the plant makes its own food. Why does the plant need sugar? Because it needs to then undergo um cellular respiration right almost blanked out of my mind it's 1 a.m while i'm recording this oh sorry 1 12 a.m while i'm recording this guy so i apologize if um if i don't well i hope i make sense that's all so anyways uh process a is photosynthesis right photosynthesis is required to make glucose and we need glucose to make atp so a, lot, a common misconception is that oh plants only undergo photosynthesis no plants undergo photosynthesis and cellular respiration Right, so the glucose that they produce in photosynthesis then goes into cellular respiration to provide them energy, right? But the whole purpose, the whole purpose of process A is to take the carbon in carbon dioxide. It's to take the oxygen in, um, you know, the oxygen in carbon dioxide. It's to take the oxygen from water. It's to take the hydrogen from H2O. And it's then, uh, its role is to combine these in a C6H12O6 fashion, which is a glucose or a uh, sugar that it can then use um, you know, to make ATP. That's the whole point. It's rearranging these elements with the power of sunlight and all these specific reactions in the Kelvin cycle to then make sugar, okay? Uh, that's all. So number 37 asks us to construct an explanation using quantitative evidence uh, or quantitative evidence for how the cycling of matter in plants results in changes in the carbon stored in the atmosphere and biosphere. So whenever you see quantitative evidence on the reason uh, on the regions, they want actual numbers. <clears throat> so unfortunately, you can't just describe the process. You'll have to you know take actual evidence from this diagram. And the evidence here is that there's 123 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter absorbed. Okay, and then there's 60 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter emitted. So 123 grams are coming in and only 60 are being emitted, which means that plants are cycling the carbon from the atmosphere into the geosphere. Okay, <clears throat> so you can say here, uh, since plants absorb 123 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter, but only release 
<clears throat> or emit uh, 60 times 10 to the power of 15 grams of matter overall they move matter not just carbon but just matter from the atmosphere to the biosphere. Now, uh, previously I said that they move carbon from the atmosphere to the geosphere. All right, uh, I was mistaken in that statement because again, there's no evidence that um, again they're depositing the matter back into the soil. Okay, so that's not true here, right? Uh, the carbon is being absorbed into themselves, right? The carbon is then stored as glucose in their leaves or in their branches or in their bark, okay? So cycling carbon or just cycling matter is all about the numbers. So if 123 grams are being absorbed and only 60 grams are being emitted, that means that in some step here, someone is hoarding all of the matter. Um, and that is, that is in the accumulation of this matter inside of these leaves of this tree. Right, or in the bark of that tree. Uh, they're holding it in the form, that matter in the form of glucose so that they have food uh, to eat, or so that the tree has food to eat uh, and digest into ATP throughout its life, right, or throughout that season. So again, um, it's important to note that if it's inside of a living thing, it is inside of the biosphere, okay? If there was an arrow that was, pa uh, that was facing towards the ground and saying that there is like 60 grams of matter emitted, then we can say it's the trees are cycling from the uh, atmosphere to the uh, geosphere. But in this case, there's no direct path between the, car the matter that was absorbed by the trees and the ground. So it's just staying inside of the biosphere, right? It's staying inside of all the living creatures or, or inside of that living organism, which is the tree in this case, okay? Uh, that is the final question for this section. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below.